Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Jack Beasley. I am a sports photographer and videographer in the Phoenix, Arizona metro area. Today, I am talking about some changes that have come down recently in the Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, and Lightroom Classic. Specifically, the change I am most interested in is their new denoise functionality. Now, they've had the functionality in the past, and I've compared them to a piece of software that I've really been advocating for a lot over the last few months, if you look at my channel, which is DxO Pure RAW 5. Now, I have said in those videos that DxO Pure RAW 5 is the best denoise product on the market today. The question is, has Adobe stepped up the plate and surpassed what I consider the best noise reduction software on the market today? I guess we're going to find out. All right, so for today's comparison, I am using the latest version that I had available to me when I shot this video. That is Pure Raw 5.2.0 and Adobe Lightroom Classic 14.4. All right, so let's compare some statistics or some facts and figures about some testing I did with both these pieces of software before we get into some photos. Now, DxO Pure Raw 5 will bulk process. And I've done it with hundreds of images, so it generally does a very good job, no problem. So some recent testing, I ran 100 images through both the Pure Raw 5 and the Lightroom Classic, exact same images, 100 images. Uh, the DxO took 16 minutes and 24 seconds to do all 100 images. That comes out to 9.84 seconds on average. Uh, the Lightroom took 15 minutes and 6 seconds, which equates to 9... 9.07 seconds each. So not a huge difference, 9.8 to 9.0, but there's some difference there. Probably the most significant change with the uh, the new denoise in Lightroom is it no longer creates a DNG file. So both of them at one time would create a, a secondary DNG file, which then you would edit that DNG file with the edits, you know, the denoise edits. Not anymore. Pure Raw still does that. Now Lightroom just does the uh, edits straight onto the raw file. It doesn't change it, doesn't alter it. You can still edit, do various edits to it after it's done its noise reduction, but it doesn't create that secondary DNG file. That's a big deal because those DNG files would get huge. I mean, my original raws were around 32 megabytes a piece. By the time you add this secondary DNG, that's up around 140 megabytes for that file. So it takes up a lot of hard drive space, those extra DNG files. So the fact that Lightroom doesn't do that anymore, that's a big deal. The other thing is you can actually adjust the noise reduction after you've done the initial, you know, processing in Lightroom. You can't do that with Pure Raw 5. What you get is what you get. You either have to make the adjustments ahead of time or go back and redo it if you didn't like how it came out. Now, normally I would just set it and forget it using the standard functionality. And for the most part, I probably would do the same thing with the Lightroom, but at least you have the opportunity to adjust the noise reduction if you so choose. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's move on and look at some images and see how they compare. All right, I've got three images. Uh, I've got the original RAWs, and I've already processed them in DxO Pure RAW 5, but we'll go through them real quick here, and I'll show the differences between the two systems. So this first image, ISO 9000, obviously it's a little bit overexposed. We zoom in on this RAW file, besides the fact it's overexposed, I've got sharpening turned off, and I have noise reduction turned off, which means you can see, especially in the background, lots of little... Uh, Pixels, multicolored pixels. Now, if we go over here to the already edited version from DxO Pure Raw 5, cleaned up all this noise very, very nicely. Zero sharpening, zero noise reduction over here on the right. And you look at his face and it's very detailed. Lots of detail in the, uh, the image, the face, the uniform, the whole bit. Now let's go to the raw file. Same thing and we're going to apply all the corrections from the DxO versions. And you can see it's still pretty noisy and it's slightly darker, which I found that the DxO tends to be 
a little brighter on exposure. So we'll pump up the exposure to match it. And let's see, let's apply some denoise here under the detail panel and see what we get. I'm just gonna leave it at 50% or whatever it is, halfway through. And you can see it cleaned it up very, very nicely. It is not as sharp as the DxO version. I'll go back to the DxO version. So DxO version is very sharp and detailed and the light reversion, not quite as much. Of course, we can bump up the sharpening over here to try to uh, equalize the two. Improved it significantly, not still not quite as good as the DxO version, but the benefit is it did not create the, uh, the secondary DNG version, which it used to do all the time, which was kind of a pain. So all in all, I think it does an excellent job. Is it quite as detailed as a DxO? No. But uh, I think the benefits outweigh the, the, uh, the negatives. Let's go to the next image. So the final image here, again, same football game, ISO 9000. No sharpening, no manual noise reduction in the denoise panel. Again, you can still, you can see lots of uh, luminance and the color noise in the image. If we go to the DxO version, cleans it up very nicely, very detailed in the face and in the uniform. So, you know, big win for the DxO version. Going back over here to the Lightroom version, I'll add the same uh, corrections as the DxO. Bump up the exposure, just like the others a little bit. Let's apply some denoise, see how that goes. And once again, cleans it up very nicely. But as you can see in his face right here and his eyes, not nearly as sharp as the DxO version. Now, is it still acceptable? Sure, I mean, we're at 100% right here. And if you zoom out, you, you really can't tell the difference between the two of them. But up close, yes, if you're doing some pixel peeping, you're gonna see some differences right here. Uh, we'll bump up the sharpening, see if it makes a difference. It, it does improve it significantly, I would say, but still not quite the same as the DxO version. But all in all, uh, you know, if you weigh the pros and the cons, the fact that you don't have a secondary DNG file, and you can still bulk process these images, uh, I think it's, it's a real winner. I'm very impressed with what Adobe has done here. All right, so we've looked at some images, we've done some comparisons, and as you can see, you really gotta do some pixel peeping to really see a difference between what comes out of Pure Raw 5 and the new Lightroom Denoise. I will say, yes, the Pure Raw 5 is a little sharper, a little more details than the Lightroom. DxO Pure Raw 5 still does a fantastic job of correcting the optics on lenses, which Lightroom will not do. So the DxO images will look sharper. However, you really gotta look carefully to see the differences between the two of them. I have to say, I'm very impressed with the Lightroom denoise module that, that's in place right now. It does a really good job. And like I say, you gotta do some pixel peeping to really see the differences between them. Now, will I continue to use DxO Pure Raw 5? Yeah, especially if I'm using like my teleconverter on some of my other lenses that I know those images are gonna be a little softer as a result of using the teleconverter. Yeah, I'm still gonna use it. But in all, maybe not as much as I used to, especially with all the benefits that are in this new Lightroom denoise module. All right, with that said, I hope you got something out of this uh, video today. If you did, I ask, if you're not already a subscriber, hit the subscribe. Uh, if you liked it, please hit that like. And if you agree with what I said or don't agree with what I said here today, please put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and if you think there's another product out there that's even better than these two, I would love to hear about it because I'm always checking out new products. With that, I thank you very much, and I will see you on the next one.